Welcome back to the DC Sports Guys. All right, we've gone through Caps coverage today, and then we went into a, uh, a, another long segment where we talked about both of our opening day experiences. One, I went to the Nationals. TJ went to the Orioles. And then we rambled on about the beginning of the baseball seasons for a little bit. Nothing too in-depth. It's the beginning of the season, just kind of kind of gauging a feel for where we are with uh, each team at the moment. And that's all uh, That's all the baseball segment really was today. And uh, now we're up to, we're just going to try and fit in a bunch of stories that happened because we were, we were off last week, so we had the bye week. So there's just a bunch of random stuff that's gone on in the past two weeks. And we're just going to, I'm just going to go through a lot of that. Most of it's recent. Where do, where do you want to start with it? You want to start with the Masters? That's the most recent thing that's happened uh, that we wanted to talk about at least in this, in this, Segment. We, can, we can do that. Let's talk about the Masters. Yeah, it that definitely was uh, it was an ex- exciting, exciting Sunday at Augusta. At uh, any one time, there were like half a dozen people tied for the lead, which was crazy. It's like every, every hole, somebody else was moving up to, to tie for the lead. It was, uh, it was hard to even keep track of what was going on. Now, to you, you're a much bigger golf fan than I am. I love, I love playing golf. I love golf, right? And I watch a lot of golf. But you're a much bigger golf fan than me. Is it more exciting for you to have five or six people changing leads on Sunday, or is it more exciting to have two guys gunning for it down the stretch, like almost everybody else out of it except for except for two guys about a stroke well, apart from each other? For just, me, just playing it out to the end. For me, and I think this is a way for most golf fans and I'm including you know just just the average the average fan maybe the, and the casual fan in this is it really doesn't matter how many people are up there as it matters who is up there because golf is big it's big on the names and the, the two biggest names of course are, are Tiger and Phil and Tiger was there on Sunday he came, came out of nowhere just blew away the front nine, shoots up in a tie for the lead, and I know, I know there's people out there that feel very people tend to feel very strongly either way about Tiger. I'm in Tiger's camp. I like to watch Tiger, despite all of his hijinks over the last couple of years. I still find myself getting excited when I, we, you know, we were at at the uh, at the bar after our hockey game, and when I heard that Tiger was tied for the lead, I mean, I got excited. I'm like, okay, where's the TV? I want to see this. And I know a bunch of other people at the table with us felt the same way. So he gets people excited. He gets people interested. That's what got me watching it. I mean, I probably would have watched it anyway, but that's what got me interested. Then once I was in there, you know, they had the whole drama with McElroy. I mean, you got to feel I feel really bad for the guy. But, I mean, he, 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 he choked, choked it away. He strangled himself. Great choked so bad. I mean, it was worse than Norman. Because, uh, you know, at least, you know, Faldo, we're talking about the, what was it, 95 or 96 when he did that? Because 96, whatever. Faldo at least, like, had a good round that day, too, to catch Norman. McElroy fell off the planet yesterday. Hit, he, that shot that he hit so far to the left, he was in between. He looked like he was out in the suburbs. He hit it so far to the left between two cabins. I don't even know how he was still in bounds. Three putted from 15 no feet away. Bounds. Yeah, I mean, the guy just completely fell apart um, on the back nine on Sunday. I don't even know what he, he ended up finishing at five under after he was at 12 to start and looked like every, everyone thought that he was just going to he was just going to waltz waltz in on Sunday and he wasn't even going to be challenged. He was just It was his. This was it. His coronation. He's one of the best young players in golf. This is it. He's going to step up just like Tiger did in 97. This is his coming out party at Augusta. Didn't Did not work out that way at all. Instead, you have all these guys charging up from the back while McElroy, McElroy's falling down the leaderboard. Uh, Tiger's up there. Adam Scott, who we haven't heard from in years, he's got the lead. Uh, Jason Day, another good young player, he's up there. Um, guys who've won majors before, like Jeff Ogilvie, they're up there. And the guy who ends up winning it is this guy who learned how to play golf at the Ernie Els Academy in South Africa, Charles Schwartzel. But, hey, 
Don't discredit him. I think every South African golfer, that's where they learn how to play golf. Isn't it? Isn't I, that like a requirement? I, 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 it's, just, it's just funny to note that, that he learned at the, the Ernie Els Academy. But, you know, he's a guy, he's a... He's you know, I don't know who, if you're not if you're not a big time golf fan, there's no chance you've heard of Charles Schwartzel. He's a guy who's won a lot over on the European tour, but who was the young South African who popped up last year? <laughs> Louis uh, Oosthuizen, right? Which I was that which, the British Open? That was at the British Open. He yeah. totally ran away with it. Yeah, but um, it, while it was great, he played great golf, birdied the last four holes, to uh, you know didn't even leave everybody in his dust basically. If you're the PGA Tour, or if you're, you're the world of golf in general, this is the worst thing that could have happened. <laughs> to have another another no-name South African with no no personality, who probably, uh, you know, I i don't think I'm going out on a limb a lot here to say that I don't think Charles Schwartzel will win another major the rest of his career. Despite the fact he's only 26 years old, and he clearly has a lot of game. I will not be surprised in the least if we never hear from him again. Another in a line of <laughs> one and done South Africans. You had Trevor Immelman won the Masters a couple years ago. He hasn't won squat since. Oost Hazen winning the British. Now Schwartzel. You know, guys that just not, it's not, it's great for them, but it's not good for the sport. For golf. Right. Now, I mean, does golf have, I mean, so you say it's too many people can win at any given day is becoming a problem. I mean, there isn't. You're waiting kind of for. I mean, that's what golf's waiting for the next tiger. I say, yeah, and they had. They they were probably so they're so excited at the beginning of the day that they have the guy that they think can be the next big star in golf in McElroy. He clearly has. He has all all kinds of games. Drives the ball ball a mile. Um, you know, he's got he's got personality. He's a guy that they can. Golf can latch on to, the fans can la latch on to, and he throws it away, and he, another, you know, no-name guy that nobody's heard of ends up winning the thing. Because Tiger's even shown that you can dominate even without having a nemesis, and, I mean, a lot of people are going to throw Mickelson into that category, but, I mean, Mickelson they never, never really had, they never really had the rivalry, and they never really competed, you know, right. you can't really point to tournaments where they were... They went head-to-head head head head. in the Masters once, but then neither of them won that year. Yeah, that was like two years ago. That was Cabrera. Each Cabrera won that one? Was that one? Or who yeah, was that? That was the Cabrera-Kenny yeah. Perry one. Right. We had Mickelson and Woods charging up the leaderboard and in the back, but in the apart. end. Right. And then Mickelson wins last year, right? And yes. With a Tigerless Masters. <sighs> Correct. Yeah. And, I mean, Mickelson, I mean, he was always, he was kind of like the second best one, but golf has shown that they can... You know they can survive with one dominating personality, and See I kind of yeah. agree with you in a way. I mean, take take personal life aside, and I know for for the fan, I, some fans can separate uh, what you do for a living and, and and your personal life. Some people can separate that. Some people can't. And uh, you know, I do for the most part. Um, yeah, d do I think he's a scumbag for what he did in his personal life? Yeah, I think he's an absolute scumbag. I agree. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and and. For for that, you know, you know, I, I am I would I ever be friends with the guy? No, not that I have that choice. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows? I, I mean, yeah, he, whatever he does in his personal life in golf, from Thursday to Sunday, if you watch, it is more exciting when Tiger's out there. It is. He has when Tiger gets that fire in his eyes. He has a passion out there on the golf course that nobody else has. Too many, yeah. too many guys in Go golf there's guys are cut from the yeah. same exact mold. You know, it, it's like what you were saying before. It's, you know, it's it's a it's. I don't want to say another South Africa. I don't want to pick on South Africa. You know, South Africa right now. Because yeah, yeah. It's, we're not we're not, we're not doing the country that. of South these, Africa, but yeah, and because they're good. Just I mean, the term. Sure just they're all good guys. I said I, I I tweeted today. But, I was like, it's another goofy looking South African winning a major. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I don't mean to disparage South Africans in any way, no. but my point being, it's just another guy. He's not memorable. People don't really connect with him. He doesn't have the charisma. He doesn't have that electricity. If we can, if we can sit back and be Simon Cowell for a minute on, like, Golf Idol, 
Right. Oh, and we have all okay. the guys coming in front of us. We're like, you're no different than the last guy who came along. Right. It's like, okay, so you want a major, but I can't tell you apart from the other guy who came before you. You know, Tiger comes up. There, there's just something about him when he's out there on the course. I like that little bit of fire, a little bit of passion. The, you know, so you are you're, you know. you're drawn to him in some way. And even yeah. now, I, I say even even when Tiger was going great, he had his detractors that people just rooted against Tiger just to see him lose. And I think there's even mm. even more of those now that would like to see him fail out there, but right. they'll watch to see him fail. Right, to see him out there. And you know, when he's out there, and he's kind of back to you know his old ways. I mean, the worst. You know, the worst decision Tiger ever made was to get married, and for whatever reasons he got married, he probably he probably felt like he was. He <laughs> many, had many, to. many guys could say the same thing. Right, I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there who will say the same thing. <laughs> not me. I'm very happy, but I'm very not, happy. not the two sitting here. Not that my wife's going to listen to this, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if she does, I love you, honey. Anyway, but um, yeah, no, some, that was some might say that the worst decision Tiger ever made was to fire Butch Harmon. But getting married is probably up there. No, as well. I think it. I think it absolutely is. I don't. He obviously wasn't ready to get married. Uh, he he did it because he thought it was the right thing to right. do. Right. He, he was just building. He, he was, was selling his persona this, of right. what people thought he should be, what he thought he should be, and he went along with. He was that. being the character. Was not being. And he also, himself. I mean, for personal reasons, you probably he probably also felt pressure. I know. You know, his dad. You know, his dad had cancer, eventually passed away. I'm sure he wanted to give his dad, you know, a family and grandkids and stuff like that, you know, while while he was still here. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of good reasons for it, too. But, um, you know, that, that put a strain on his professional career as well. And if you're going to analyze how he's playing, I think he's got a much better shot now that he's put all that behind him and that now he can be who... You know, now he can be Tiger. He can go out and do whatever he wants. I mean, yes, he still has two kids. He'll probably see him just as much as he would have been on the tour anyway. Um, you know, being out golfing all the time. I mean, that's yeah. the nature of professional athletes. And I think that's one of the unfortunate yeah. things about being professional athletes. You don't get to be around your kids. But he gets to go out and, you know, do his own thing now, and I think that's better for him. And when his putting comes around, which is the hardest thing to get back, He'll be back in the thick of things. Is he going to win a ton of majors? Who knows? But you're right. It's it's more exciting when he's out there, either to root for him or against him while he's out there on the course. When he's out there, he's a polarizing figure, and it's just more exciting when he's out there to use the same word to describe him, I don't know, ten times in a row. Yes. So I, I, I would say it was, it was an exciting Masters. It was enjoyable to watch. Um you got some glimpses of what could possibly be the future. Um, I liked what they did pairing the first two days. They had McElroy playing with Jason Day and Ricky Fowler, another one of the young guys that uh, I think golf has high hopes for. Another guy with lots of personality, lots of lots of charisma, a guy that the the, the sport could latch on to. Where was Anthony Kim in all this? He hurt him. He, he hurt he himself or not? last he wasn't year. In it. He was in there. He shot like oh. six over and missed oh, the cut. Oh, wow. Okay. Because he's but another yeah, young he's guy. He's injured. Supposed to, okay, he's injured. So he's all been right. bad. He's been sh struggling with the injuries. But, yeah, he was another young up-and-coming guy. So, you know, I think golf is I mean, golf is searching for the next Tiger, I think. But um, I think they would settle for the old Tiger. <laughs> 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 more, more, than, more than anything, I think they would uh, prefer if they had the old Tiger back. Yes. All right. Well, we said we were going to talk about a lot of different things. We've been blabbing about the Masters for a while. Is there anything else about the Masters that you like to get? I think that's that's it's kind of the biggest thing for the day. The broadcast was uh, what you expected to be: fifty-six minutes of golf for <laughs> every hour. I want to punch Jim Nance in the face after four days of listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 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 what I have to say about the broadcast. That's. <laughs> if oh, they and it doesn't. And they can't. Oh, God forbid they start it before three thirty. Yeah, I still don't get weekend. that. It's or like there's even, nothing else not on. Not even until 3 during yeah. on uh, on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. Because there's nothing on in the morning. So, why not just... You know, God forbid you let see more of your ridiculously beautiful course. I'm sure people will just get super tired of it if you show a couple more hours. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I think All we're right. good That's on enough. That. That's enough Let's for the move. Masters. We're, we're going to talk about some Maryland basketball. Let's go for it. A couple things. Um... We've got the old, the, the Debbie Yao controversy, her sticking her foot yeah, right in her the mouth. <sighs> so that glad she's gone. So glad. So glad she's gone. Yes. 
So I mean, where should we? Where did this even begin? Did this start? Did this start at the press conference? This is all within the press conference to introduce the new coach at NC State. Right. I don't. I don't even know the guy's name. He coached at Alabama. He coached at Alabama. Yeah. Mark. I want to say Mark Godfried. Yes, that, that sounds that right? right. That sounds pulling right. pulling that out of my ass. Look so, it up real quick. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So she, <laughs> they, they're at the press conference. They're introducing him, and I think, I don't even, uh, I forget what the question was. But Debbie, uh, they talked about, you know, the coaching search or something. And I don't even think the question was necessarily directed at her. And she just jumped in saying, defending herself and her reputation with coaches around college basketball. Yes, and in, in implying, not even implying, stating that <laughs> her search was sabotaged by Gary Williams. That, like <laughs> straight up saying that, that saying and saying while the coach that she hired is on the stage, saying right next to her, right now, as close as me and you are sitting right now, yeah, saying we didn't get the guys that we wanted because of Gary Williams. Instead, we got this guy. <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead we got him. Do you think we wanted him? We want him. He's nothing. We're we're basically wasting millions of dollars on this guy. What a rigging endorsement for Mark Gottfried. What you? <laughs> I, if I was him, I would just would have I would just left the stage and walked out. <laughs> like I, I'm done. I'm done here. It's been it's been nice knowing you. Yeah. So that's and and she even went as far as saying as she's thinking about bringing up charges. Yeah. It's it's the whole the whole thing is ridiculous. Which is ridiculous. And and just think about it for a minute. You know, even if Gary had some animosity towards Debbie Al, uh, wh- 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 who does he care gets hired at NC State? I mean, he already has, you know, Coach K, Roy Williams. There, there's plenty of people in the ACC to worry about. People get hired in and out all the time. Uh, you know, if people come to Gary and ask him, which I don't know if it happened or not, they were saying at the Final Four he was talking bad about Debbie Al, but... I don't know. If someone comes to you and asks you, you know, how was it I working think, with so and so? You say you get yeah. along with them or you didn't. I think I think it was John Feinstein that said, if anybody wanted to know Gary's opinion on working with Debbie Al, they they don't need to go ask him. Go to Google. They, they already people yeah. already know <laughs> how he feels about Debbie Yao. Yes, I mean we've known it. For how long? I mean, as long as we've been Terps fans. Yes. I mean, this is not a new thing that him and Debbie Yao butted heads. Debbie Yao came in and replaced every head coach except for Gary Williams. Because she could. Yeah. Right. And they, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, she's really, yeah. She's just trying to cover her ass because the program, NC State, the, the fans, the alumni, the boosters there have a much higher opinion of their program than is actually is in reality. Their you know their feelings are not based in reality. Yes, you won a national championship back in the '80s. That was great. You are not you're not a top program. You don't get to pick and choose the coach that you want to come there. You don't get to go get the hot name at the moment like a shock of smart. You know, who I think made the right decision staying. At oh, ACU. absolutely. And we talked especially about that not on the last show before we yeah, came. Especially I not <laughs> for NC State. Oh, no way. Much less, I mean, take Debbie Al out of the picture entirely. Just that's not, that is not a, a an A1 job in college basketball. You can do much better than NC State. And uh, Feinstein had some other good comments uh, throughout the week. He uh, he talked about the B, uh, BB&T Classic that they put on every year, uh, which, you know, is all fundraising for different charities uh, in the area. That's why they put it on to raise money for charities. That's that's basically why it exists. And he talked about how every year Gary Williams had to come in and kind of save the thing and get Maryland to play in it because every year they'd sit down at the table and Debbie Yao would ask for like twice as much money as they were offering. And every year Feinstein would have to say this isn't the this isn't the tournament's not being put on so Maryland can walk away with an extra, you know, $80,000 in their athletic budget. It's being put on because the money's supposed to be going to charity, and we're trying to get, you know, some big-name schools in here. And it's supposed to be mostly donations. Maryland's already getting more than any other school to be in it, I believe. And every year, Debbie Yao would play hardball with them, and every year, from what, you know, Feinstein says, is Gary would have to come in and go, no, we're playing in this, and we're going to play 
at this price to, yeah. you know, to be in and, and keep this thing going. And that just gives you a little bit more insight. And those that's what you have to go by because, you know, we're, we've never sat down with Debbie or even Gary Williams or anybody for that matter. So we don't know what happens on clo- behind closed doors. Feinstein does. Uh, Feinstein's another guy out there. You either like him or you don't. But he but actually I, has sat down with these people before. So yes. um, I believe what he says. I believe he's a truthful guy. I believe he's a truthful guy. Like I mean, you look at it, you know, he's, I don't th- mm. he's not by any means – a Gary Homer. This is a guy who, who went to Duke and has a great relationship with with Coach K, and exactly. he also has a great relationship with Gary Williams. So I, I mean, I, yeah, I take I take Feinstein at his word there. Um, unlike someone like say uh, Greg Doyle <laughs> from glad. CBS, Mister <laughs> Affliction T-shirt himself. <laughs> so the the the, the <laughs> fun part to this story. You know, if it if it wasn't good enough uh, for Terps fans alone just to know that, oh, thank God we got rid of Debbie Yao, Greg Doyle sticks his little neck into the fray. Completely, One, yes, completely unsolicited. Never, never heard of this guy before. Apparently he writes other, for CBS Other sports. people have. I had not heard of him before. Uh, apparently... He's, I had, he's I had to big, go, yeah, I had to Google him. He's the big name down in North Carolina for CBS. He uh, he writes for them. He's basically a shock jock for sports, <laughs> and he's always he's one of those people who basically seems like he's pissed off all the time. Yes, right. He's he's loud for the sake of being yeah, loud. Yeah, he's loud. He attention. always takes the other side of any argument for the for the heck of it. But uh, he says a few things. Yeah, it's a good picture of him right there. Um, he, he comes out and, one, just starts bashing Gary Williams and defending Debbie Yao, uh, I guess for where, because of where he is in North Carolina. I have no idea why he, he even chose the side that he's on. That's kind of irrelevant. The relevant some reason, part of the he really story. likes NC State and he, he really hates Gary Williams. Right. He uh, likes the little only, schools. I only imagine because of something that Yeah, and went that's what he does. He likes, little, he likes the little schools. He likes... He, he likes picking on big name programs and trying to defend little schools, but he does it at he just does it to do it. It's not because he actually likes or hates anything. It's his gimmick. And so he comes out and the the, the main part of the story is that he calls Gary Williams a little runt of a man and a coward because Greg Doyle requested that Gary Williams come on his radio show, his CBS radio talk show in North Carolina. And Gary never got back to him, and then he just goes on this long rant, or I guess it wasn't too long, but it wasn't too long. But he, he ranted. rant about Gary Williams yes. and how he is a pathetic. He's a human coward. Being. He's yellow. I believe he actually used the term yellow. Yeah, he, he, he said uh, "dad gummit" at one point. <sighs> and the best part about this is, within hours of him saying this, the next day. Both 106.7 The Fan and Sports Talk 980, and I also believe CSN, Washington, all extended invitations to Mr. Doyle to come on air in D.C., any D.C. sports station. He could have had his pick, pick of show, pick of person, anybody. He could have stayed within CBS and done 106.7 The Fan and stayed within the parent company and come on and defended himself in D.C. No response. Also, no response on Twitter, no article about it on his site, no nothing. Like it, it never wasn't there, happened. He said, like there was, an, he said, made it sound like there was an article coming about yes. Gary Williams and the search. And there, yeah. it, there has been no article. There's been nothing. <laughs> uh, Debbie Yao has said there's going, she's going to file stuff. Greg Doyle says he's writing an article with all this stuff. Basically, he's given neither of them have given any facts about anything, and they're just, you know, Greg Doyle especially is just. Yeah, he's an affliction shirt wearing, mohawk wearing, loudmouth who's on the <laughs> air. The funniest part and of it for me was googling Greg Doyle and going to the images and seeing his headshot, and just looking at his headshot and going, saying to myself, "I was like, this guy <laughs> looks like a guy who wears affliction shirts." Then continuing to scroll down through the images and finding a picture of him and, and an and affliction, affliction shirt. shirt. <laughs> And you know, just and and you have to believe that you know by his own definition of what a coward is, is that he is a uh, you know he's just a loudmouth coward. He's he sits coward. behind he's his slug. mic. He is you know kind of like us. We just sit less, behind mics and, and, and less yeah, than a human people. being. Yeah. Although I will actually go out if anybody if actually anyone asks ever requests me, me to defend my opinion, I would go I do would it. Do so. I would go do it. <laughs> yes, I would go out and. Uh, but he doesn't. If that. <laughs> if that Case ever arises somewhere <laughs> way way down <laughs> the line. Ever happen? 
Yes, yeah, we would go we, out we would and do, do so. It. So if anybody asked us to defend, I use my real name. You use your real name. It's not like we're sitting back here and you know just spouting all stuff and not putting our names to it, which is what you know everyone has a problem with on the internet is all the anonymous stuff. We're not anonymous about anything. And if anybody ever wanted to talk to us about any of our opinions, we'd be more than willing to. But Greg Doyle has basically he def- he has defined his definition of a coward and followed that definition to a T. So congratulations. You're a pathetic little human being who p- pretends that he... Or I mean, I guess he, he I guess he actually is into MMA, but he has, like, the whole douchey MMA persona. Oh, he is a douche. No. <laughs> he is the I'm an MMA fan, the but MMA. There's, a, there's a large portion of that following who are just douchey followers of the sport. You can be a follower of MMA and not, you know, not do all that other crap. Anyway, yes. but Greg Doyle... Coward, uh, stay down in North Carolina. You know, uh, a lot of people have been calling him out. He hasn't responded to anything. I'm pretty sure what happened was is he's a big loud mouth with a big voice on his show, and then he went back and saw his his boss at CBS came to him and goes, "What the hell are you doing? You're not talking about this again." And Greg Doyle went, "Yes, sir. I'm not gonna do it again." You know, he acts like in front of the mic he's a big shot, and then when it when it actually takes to answering something he's not and he's he acts like a big shot i don't know why people follow him because even his even the people that like email into him and stuff i mean his biggest thing is seems to be his biggest running blog seems to be his hate mail where he responds to hate mail that's his biggest thing is people get off guy, on right. calling him out and I've then decided, he gets off on calling them i've out. decided we've spent too much time on this we have loser. talked about too much about greg doyle but no greg longer, doyle is, he is no longer worth any and we encourage everybody to call him a coward on twitter I retweeted a couple stuff, but I encourage you to just just go. I think it's Greg Doyle CBS. You can find it. Just search for Greg Doyle. Go ahead and call him a coward real quick, and then uh, you've done your good deed for the day. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Anything else that we need to talk about? Uh, We got Jordan Williams Williams Williams. declaring for the draft, not hiring an agent. Um, If you don't know how I feel about this, if he goes to the NBA with where people say that he's projected, which is – I mean, it's anywhere from late first round to not drafted at all. And I, I tend to lean on the side of not drafted at all at this point with where his game is and the kind of season that he had. You know, maybe somebody takes a shot on him, but if he declares for the NBA and hires, you know, goes all the way, hires an agent, stays in the draft, he's an idiot. Yeah, I think he's in the same exact boat Gravis Vasquez was the first year Gravis did this. Is He had the same thing, where he was projected anywhere from first year to not draft it at all. I think uh, a little bit of these draft predictions are kind of like movie reviews. Y- you can always go out and find someone to give you a four-star review. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to... Jordan Williams, probably best player, consistent player on the Terps this past year, double-doubles, everything else. But we're talking about making the jump from college to the NBA and what he's going to be like an NBA player. And I think he has a lot more to prove at the college level to be drafted in a spot in the draft that would make it worth going, to actually make a team and start making millions of dollars, right? Like if, if he had such a great season that it looked like he was going to be a lottery pick, there's no – Yeah, you go. You go. You go. You no go. questions asked. No question. Yeah. Go. Well, not. But if you're going to be a hold a grudge against you at all, you got a chance to get paid. That's your opportunity. You take it. Yeah, you take it. Chris Wilcox probably could have benefited from another year of college, but guess yeah, what? So he was a lottery pick. Millions Guaranteed of dollars. Pick. You go. You yeah. go every t- ten times out of ten. Every time, if you're going to be a lottery pick, um, if you're going to be late first round, second round, and you may not even make the team that drafts you. So that happens a lot in the NBA, and then you have to go over uh, to you Europe. You play in Europe, and the great, you probably make a good living playing yeah, basketball but o- over in Europe. You have a better shot at getting better at a year in college basketball and moving up in the draft than you do at going to play in Europe for a year and then coming back and trying to get that money. Playing in college for another year is better than playing in Europe for another year. Agree, yeah. Absolutely. Unless, unless you're Brandon Jennings, you don't go to Europe for a year yeah, okay. and then – Come There's, back and be a lottery pick. Right. There's a. That does, it, it really doesn't happen. You go to Europe, they forget about you. Right. There's a. You know. There's an exception to every rule, but. Um, yeah. If he get, and then if he gets drafted, and then he goes and plays in Europe, then it's going to be even harder for him to break back in at any type of decent position on a team because then he's just. You know, after a team drops you, I mean, that's pretty much it. You're kind of in this purgatory unless you really percolate to the top because they're yeah, going to take the next best person coming out of college basketball. You know. Uh, 
whatever. We don't we don't know. We're not talent evaluators. We are not. Well, you can tell. I mean, we can tell from watching Joey Williams. He has he has certain strengths. He's good. He's good good in the post. He's got some back to the basket game. Um, he obviously rebounds the ball well. He's tenacious. Gets on the boards. He's oh, I think great. he has He's huge great around the rim. He's got great hands. He finishes. He needs to work on the free throw shooting. He needs to work on the jump shot. These are things that he could work on with another year in college. He could definitely, he could probably, we saw how much his body changed from his freshman year to his sophomore year of him getting in shape, becoming more athletic. N another year in the strength program at Maryland. I think he be needs to get nastier inside, too. To be in yeah, the he NBA, could definitely, he could he needs definitely to, yeah. add more strength. He could add more agility for another year. Uh, I think he's still, he's got so, I feel like he's just got so much more room to grow. And throw in the fact there might not be an NBA season. Right. <laughs> Next yeah. year. So even if you get drafted, you may not be playing. But uh, all those things considered, I think this is a, you know, this is a business move, and you have to do this because uh, it doesn't affect his his eligibility right now. He's declared for the draft, and what he's going to do is he's just going to he's going to get a lot of advice, hopefully good advice, and uh, he's going to see where it falls. And uh, obviously, it's, it's yeah. obviously, as Maryland fans, we hope he comes back. I hope, yeah. As fans, you absolutely hope he comes back because with him back. And the young talent that started to progress a little bit last year. You hope the Terps just get a lot better. But um, I don't think he's going to go um, because I think it's all over the map of where he's projected to get drafted. And I don't see him being a lottery pick. And if you're not a lottery pick, I don't, I don't see any reason for him to leave right now. I think it'll be exactly what happened with Gravis Vasquez is he'll come back to Maryland for a year. And then we'll, we'll see what happens next year with him. But I believe he will be back. I think that's the smart decision for Jordan Williams. Unless he's unless there's a team out there that just supposedly absolutely loves him and tells him that they're absolutely going to draft him, but uh, I just don't see that happening at the moment. Anyway, what's next on the docket? Um, I'm 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 out. You're I'm out. All out. You're all out. Fresh I'm out. All out. Yes, the cupboard the cupboard is bare. Got nothing else. Do you have anything else? I thought you wanted like to to, uh, to rag on that national championship game. A oh, I don't bit. even want to talk about that national championship game. No. It, yeah, it's been a thing. while. It's been a while, and I've blocked it from my memory, which is a good thing because it was disgusting, and I have nothing good to say about it. Well, wh what are your feelings overall for the tournament? You know, aside from the national championship game, how how do you think tournament went as a whole? I, I say leading up to the national championship game, it was great. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really hard. It's really hard for the tournament to be bad. Now the NCAA is trying with <laughs> expanding it and throwing in all, all the play-in games and whatnot. Well, yeah, they're BCU trying their best. They're trying their best to ruin it. Um, but I, I think the, the the tournament itself, the product itself, is it stands on its own, regardless of well how they they tinker with it. Um, again, it was great leading up to it with you know the runs that Butler, and VCU made. Um, I, I don't care so much about you know they say. That, and we saw this in the national championship game that the product is not what it once was with you know with the one and dones people going to the NBA early that these mid major teams that you know they actually keep guys together for four years you're going to see more and more of them making runs this is the first year we've had two of them in the final four you know it was just a couple of years ago where we we saw George Mason make the runs to the final four this is something we're going to see more and more of this now right and uh, I think. Uh, well, I kind of, I kind of went on a little, I don't know, rant, but a little, little blurb about this weeks ago when the tournament was just about to start. Is I, I thought this was going to happen. Like even in this tournament, is that because the big schools get the best players from high school who leave early, they don't get people to run their system for years on end. They're constantly changing. 18 and 19 year olds all the time in their program and those 18 and 19 year olds are the best players on their team so you're interchanging you're, you're losing your best player every one or two years or if, you're, or if you're Kentucky your best five players <laughs> <laughs> depending on how your recruiting goes um, and you're losing them all the time but these mid-majors they get the next tier athlete Who's not necessary? I mean, it might be a step down from the top tier athletes, but there, a lot of these guys aren't far off, especially in basketball. There's only five guys on the court, and basketball's exploded to be such a huge sport in the United States now that there's so many good basketball players, and now they get them, 
you know, now these colleges, you, you get players from other countries who come over here to play high school for a couple of years, and then they play high school, and then they go to college, you know, things like that. So, I mean, the basketball talent pool is just huge. And you get guys, you get, you know, some of these second-tier guys to play four years together, or you get guys for four years, and you get seniors teaching the younger guys who also stay for four years and can teach the guys coming in, and you can add stuff to your system instead of reteaching the same stuff year in and year out because you keep losing all your best players, you're going to see a lot of these quote-unquote mid-majors. So I guess mid-major is just a non-BCS school. And yeah. uh, you're, you're going to see a lot more of them doing well in tournament all the time because you get that. this continuity. I, I'm perfectly fine with that. I, I think it's plenty enjoyable to watch to watch teams that you don't see all the time um, You know that aren't big schools. I think that's fun. I think it's fun to see new teams to make make the unexpected runs, you get to learn about you know coaches like Shaka Smart, who was a very very exciting guy to watch, and his own right just coaching. It was Dude, fun just to watch that him. clip of him warming up before the Final Four game. Yeah, oh, taking run the charge. It, run it, yeah, take the charge. <laughs> run down the ball. <laughs> dive on the ground for the loose ball. Save the ball. And it was uh, yeah, it was crazy. Like While the Calvin whole team chases you around the court and screams yeah. and cheers, that was ridiculous, intense. No, and I think he made uh, mention it before. I think he made the best movie could have made. Uh, VCU's not a small school; they have a fairly good endowment. Um, is he not? Is he not going to make as much there as he could have at a North Carolina State? No, he's not. But the thing is, he's also not in danger of getting fired at VCU. Uh, the two coaches that left previous to him from VCU, I believe, are both on their second job after VCU now. They, they, they both got fired from their jobs right after that. So now they're both looking. I, I don't know exactly where they are at the moment, but they've both already gone through that next job. If he stays at VCU and he can bring talent in there and get guys to stay for four years and stuff, I mean, he could put together a pretty good program. And Richmond's not so far out of the way. It's not like it's out in the boondocks or anything. Richmond's close enough to North Carolina and Maryland, which are two pretty good you know, areas for basketball you know, to get, get recruits so, out of. I think he's got, you know, he got his name out there. He's shown, he's shown that he can coach. Um, so I think he's in a position now where he can, if he so chooses, he can pick his job in the future. Oh, Not necessarily has to go right now. Yeah, and especially if VCU does well again next year. I mean, that just makes it yeah. even better you for him. And, and what VCU has shown, they've made several runs in the tournaments. You know, they've gotten several coaches Big time jobs. This is not doesn't seem to be a fluke for them anymore. They're right. they're a school now and that's going to get in the tournament. And as college basketball is going, it may not be the worst decision for him just to stay too. I mean, it's not like he's making chump change at VCU. He's going to be making a good salary, and you know he could stay it, yeah, there. And he's and you know he's he is the man there. Yeah, <laughs> where he's if, man, if he goes to a, a big time school with. You know the pressures and the boosters, and and it may not it may not be a basketball school. It could be a football first school. I mean, there could be you know all kinds of things. I mean, that wouldn't have been the case at NC State, but you know who knows where he ends up. You know, you weigh the decision yeah. between you want to get paid, or I mean, or do you want to you, you know want to be build your career, and you want to be around for a while. Then jumping at the first big time job might not necessarily be the best way to the right go. Decision. So yeah, so I think he made the right decision, and uh, good for him and VCU. Anyway, I guess that's uh, that's everything we we got. We actually went two hours. I don't know how we got here, but we're here. We talk we're here at the two-hour mark. We talk about sports. That's what we do here. Whether whether anybody listens or not, we'll, we'll that's check right. that out later. We'll <laughs> Whatever. We will continue to talk until someone we'll, listens. We'll, until, yes, until someone responds. <laughs> anyway, if you think we missed anything today uh, about. Oh, where do we go? Caps, Major League Baseball, the Terps, uh, the Masters, golf. Yeah. golf, anything. Send it on in. If you want us to talk about something different, something that you want, uh, it's something that you want to talk about. You can even call us up and leave send us your send, own little rant about anything. Send us some emails, anything, some texts, emails, so hit anything. us up on the Twitter. Yep, Facebook. It's all at www.dcsportsguys.com. Just just click on the social networking link, and you'll get all the ways you can contact us. We, there's too many ways to contact us. And anything you have on your phone or on your computer, you, you, you can give us a ring, or you can let us know what you think, and uh, we'll either replay it or uh, we're, we're here. We won't talk to you like Greg Doyle. We won't. We won't. Anything. Tell us how much we stink. We'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. 
<laughs> we have no problem with that. So send it on in to uh, mailbagdcsportsguys.com or Facebook or Twitter or any of the other methods. We were down Big J for the day. But uh, we still made it through. Hopefully we'll have Big J back next week when the Capitals are a few games into their playoff series. And hopefully that's going well for the Capitals because I don't want to have to be crying through the entire segment. I don't want to have to sit here. I'm growing, I, I forgot to mention, the beard is coming in nicely. I started growing it for our playoff series, keeping it going for the Caps run, do the beard thon every year. That's another thing. Uh, going to be doing the beard thon I think Big J is doing it too. It's uh, all the We put our beards up. If you want to donate, you can. The money doesn't go to us. It goes to the Caps Care Foundation. Uh, or grow your own beard and uh, raise money yourself. I mean, all the money goes to the same place. Don't care how it gets there. But uh, beard a is always a fun thing to do. And I want to have a big, gnarly, just mountain man of a beard by June. That, that is what I want. Uh, yeah, I want a big old, big old playoff beard on my face. You want to be just all hot and uncomfortable Absolutely. in the middle of summer. And just completely happy about it. All right. Just completely happy about it. It's starting to come in nicely. I mean, it's a little thin, a little thin on the sides at the moment. But, uh, you know, it should come in nice and thick as we get going. And hopefully the Capitals pull it out. I've been preaching patience to everybody all year. So I just ask... I asked for the Caps to do well <laughs> in round one. Got to do well in round one. Anyway, if you think we missed anything, let us know. That's all we have for today. So for TJ, this is Kevin McGrath saying, gentlemen, wear history. <laughs>